so welcome you all again to the video series that i'm making uh, first of all i like to thank you all who are posting very good comments uh, on the videos that i have made i know you like the videos i know that you found them useful and that gives me a motivation to make more and more videos uh, for you uh, if you have any suggestions for future topics that you want to learn uh, then obviously i will make more videos out of it but today uh, we are going to discuss a very important parasite uh, which is especially of concern in especially tropics and temperate countries is known as hookworm and this hookworm parasite is also known as scientifically by the name of ankylostoma duodenale or some people called it as old world hookworm there is another uh, variety or another parasite which is very similar to an its uh, life cycle uh, is uh, nectar americanus and <coughs> that is also known as uh, new world hookworm now hookworm is uh, a very important cause of iron deficiency anemia and it is so named because its anterior end is uh, bent in adult worm and it is one of the soil transmitted uh, helminth thick parasite uh, and each species has its own type of hookworm for example human hookworms i have already told you is uh, ankylostoma duodenale and nectar americanus now lots of people uh, ask me that how to remember life cycles yeah, easily now uh, in this video i try to make it uh, this complex life cycle a little bit more simplified so without wasting time let's start so i always start uh, with the host and you know that there is uh, only uh, one host in case of uh, hookworm so first of all decide which is the host so there is only one host there are no uh, more than one host in case of uh, hookworm and that is basically human beings so there is only one host that is human so once uh, only one host is there that means it is the definitive host and as well as it is also the intermediate host now we know that uh, definitive host is the host in which adult worm is found and intermediate host is one in, in which the larval form is found so that means in human you can find both adult worm and larva then i will always start with the habitat now what do you understand by habitat habitat means a place uh, where normally uh, the adult worm lives in human body so obviously because humans are definitive host as well as intermediate host so adult worm you can find in human beings so the habitat is small intestine okay so you can see that male as well as female adult worms they are attached uh, with their hooks to the small intestinal mucosa right now because these adult worms are there uh, and then male will fertilizes the female and the process is known as copulation now as you can see that in female worm and this is universally the phenomena that female worm is always longer than the male worm so as you can see the male has a copulatory bursa uh, on its posterior end and the female has genital opening somewhere uh, between anterior one third and posterior uh, two third so you get this y shape configuration uh, while uh, copulation so male will fertilizes the female and obviously female is basically oviparous uh, female that means she will lay eggs uh, and interestingly the eggs uh, are segmented initially so segmented eggs are released in 
feces so in feces uh, you will see that uh, uh, one two three and four this is a typical uh, egg which is released which is oval in shape as you can see and it has a four what we know as blastomere so it has four blastomeres in it and this egg when it is released in feces will undergo development in soil and it will further divide within 24 to 48 hours that is approximately one to two day and from uh, that blastomere you will develop a larva a rapidity-form larva so now you have a egg with larva and that is known as <coughs> embryonated egg right and soon this uh, larva will break the eggshell and it will come out or hatch out and then it will start undergo molting now what is molting molting is basically removal of the outer skin of this uh, larva so it will mold twice uh, on day third because on day two it has developed on day third it will try to come out of its skin and on day five it will again molt so molting one is at day three and molting two is at day five and then it will convert it to a more mature form of larva and that is known as filary form larva and this is the infective form this is the form which infects the human being and filary form larva uh, enters uh, via skin penetration so while you are walking barefooted uh, in the field uh, then this larva will penetrate the skin of foot usually uh, because it is found in soil now from there it will enter into the venous circulation and through peripheral veins it will go to inferior vena cava and it will end up on the right side of heart and from right side of heart it will go uh, towards uh, pulmonary artery and enters into the lung capillary bed and in lung uh, it will develop further and then it will enter into bronchus it will ascend up to the trachea then pharynx and ultimately swallowed back uh, to the esophagus the via epiglottis then from esophagus it will enter into stomach and reach its main destination that is the small intestine so as you can see this is the entire course of its life cycle and in intestine this larval form will now mature into male and female adult form so this is the point from where we have started so i hope uh, that you can uh, easily now remember this uh, life cycle uh, if you like it and if you learn uh, the way I uh, teach these life cycles, uh, I have tried to make them very simplified, the entire subject in my book Parasitology Simplified. I will post the link to uh, the book in the description below the video. Uh, thank you all for watching and I hope uh, 